Hey man, let's give God a hand this morning. For the rest of my life, I'll serve him. I want to give honor to God this morning. I give honor to his son, Jesus. I give honor this morning to the Holy Ghost. He is the power of God. I give honor to Bishop Joseph White, founding and presiding bishop of the Church of Living God International. I give honor today to the board of directors. I give honor to Elder Walter Jones, our district superintendent, to assistant Pastor Harris, Brother Brooks, all minister, saints, and friends near and far. And those that are going to watch this recording, I give honor to you because you've taken time out of your life to watch this for God. And so I pray that as you do watch this recording, even as, as sometimes the Spirit leads us to, to watch the recordings from our own church, that the Spirit will give more and more revelation, that he'll come in more and more because if we do this out of routine, we'll get nothing. But if we do this by the Spirit, everything we're doing right now and even watching by the Spirit, the Spirit can meet you there again. Amen. So I give honor to everyone today, to where all honors do. And today has been a wonderful day in the Lord. And the Spirit has been moving since the beginning. And He has been drawing hearts and delivering us and renewing us in the spirit of our mind and changing us how we think about things and causing us to examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith. And I had my scriptures down and everything, but I didn't have a topic. And as, as Christian education was going forward, the Spirit started showing me that the scriptures and things he gave me tie in to about being forgiven. So my topic today is, have you been forgiven? Have you been forgiven? If you turn with me to Psalms 111. Have you been forgiven? And Assistant Pastor Harris was teaching with an anointing this morning. And the Spirit was present to hand out and give severally as He will whatever you needed today. And He's still here to give you what you need. Over in Psalms 111 and 10, when you get there, please say amen. Psalms 111, verse 10. And the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. His praise endured forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it says, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Anyone that is saved should have a good understanding. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we've been talking about being forgiven. And that fear is that we won't be forgiven. And if we're not forgiven, then that means we can't make it into heaven to live with God forever. And that's why Jesus said in Christian education that we should consider ourselves first and not just consider, well, this person has sinned and this person has done this against me and they have made me mad and how many times do I got to invite them over and I can't stand seeing them. Whatever the case may be, Jesus said, consider yourself first. He said, because if you don't forgive, my father, which in heaven won't forgive you. And that's why the Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The first thing that we should understand is that we have to be acceptable unto God. If you turn with me over to Proverbs 4 and 7, the topic this morning is, Have you been forgiven? Proverbs verse four, chapter 4, verse 7. And the Bible says, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. And I went and looked up the definition of principal. Because it's not talking about a school principal. But principal is first in order of importance. And then it says main. M-A-I-N. So principal is the first in order of importance. And it's the main thing. So when we read this again, wisdom in verse 7, Proverbs 4 and 7, wisdom is first in order of importance. Wisdom is the main thing. And so it says, therefore, get wisdom. And again, that wisdom is that if we don't forgive, God won't forgive us. And that wisdom is that we need to be forgiven because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That by default, we were already offensive unto God. 
By just breathing, we had already sinned against God because the sin that Adam committed, the Bible says, is passed down from generation to generation. Every time a child is born, they're born in sin and shaping in iniquity. So just by being alive, we needed to get right with God. Just by being alive, we needed God to forgive us for something we had not yet done. But then on top of that, all the things that we did do, because the Bible teaches us that by nature we were the children of wrath, the children of disobedience. So by being born, we were going to be disobedient to God because we were born not with the Holy Ghost. We were born with evil spirits. We were born needing God to cleanse us. We were born needing a Savior. So this wisdom here is the principal thing. And with all our getting, we should get an understanding. With all our coming to church, we should get an understanding. With all of our prayers, we should get an understanding. With all of our reading, we should get an understanding of what God has for us. If you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, bringing us back to where we are. Have you been forgiven? And we learned so much in Christian education this morning. And it's just sticking with me even now that the person that forgives, that means someone's done something against you, they've treated you wrong, you have a responsibility to forgive that person. And we have to know this, and the Bible teaches us that, because Jesus said again, if we don't forgive, God won't forgive us. So it's my responsibility. If I'm trying to go to heaven, I claim to be a Christian, on my way to this heaven that I believe in, I have a responsibility to forgive. And it's between me and God how I seek his face and his help to help me to forgive, to help me to get over it, to help me push Satan to the side, to help me push those feelings down that keep me not forgiving. And so over in Ephesians 2, she also said, before we read 2, she said, the person that has been forgiven, so I'm the one that offended somebody and did somebody wrong, even if it's just me not being mindful, because you can offend somebody not being mindful. Maybe, maybe it's their birthday, and then... I didn't say happy birthday. I didn't do whatever it was. I just, for time and time again, I'm just the person known never to say anything nice. And the person has forgiven me. They say, you know what? It's all right. I forgive you. Then it's my responsibility not only to try not to do that anymore. It's like, Lord, help me to remember. How come I can't remember? You can ask God for anything. You can literally say, God, I don't understand why I keep forgetting. I mean well. I even got a calendar reminder. But somehow, it's the day after in his happy belated birthday again. You can ask God to help you. But then on top of that, I'm about to get to where I'm going in Ephesians 2. The responsibility is I need to forgive because they've forgiven me. So the next time somebody forgets something that's important to me, I need to say, well, you know, it's all right. Remembering that it was made all right when I was the one that was doing wrong. Remembering it was made all right in God's sight when it was me standing in the need of prayer. So that brings us over to Ephesians 2 and 1. Have you been forgiven today? Because there's a responsibility. The Bible says in 2 and 1, And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. The beginning fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And his wisdom is knowing that we were dead in trespasses and sins. No way, shape, form, or body is it not true. But we all were dead in trespasses and sins. It says, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Every last one of us walked according to the course of this world. Did whatever the world did, did whatever they said, said, and however it was, that's what we did. We were not walking according to the course of God. But it was the course of this world. Even with good intentions, even with good morals, it was still according to the course of the world. The best morals in the world are according to the course of the world. Because God gives you holiness. He doesn't give you good morals. He gives you righteousness. He doesn't give you good morals. And the Bible says, over in the next verse, it says, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. It says, all of us, have you been forgiven? All of us need to be forgiven. 
until that great day that Jesus comes back or we go on to be with the Lord in heaven, we need to be forgiven. You can be forgiven today. It is now 1233. You can be forgiven at 2 o'clock. You can be forgiven at 8 o'clock tonight. Because Jesus said, if a man sin against thee seven times in one day, not seven times a week, seven times a month, seven times a year, seven years, he said in one day. He said, then that person comes back to you with a good and honest heart, and they repent to you, and they say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I stepped on your toes. I'm sorry I, I said the wrong things. I'm sorry I offended you with my food. I'm sorry, whatever it is. He said, you got to forgive them every time. So the Bible said that we were the nature, by nature, the children of wrath. That means we were going to receive the wrath of God. The judgment of God, which means a burning, eternal hell. It says by nature, by being born, that sin that was passed down. So we had to be forgiven. So we would no longer be the children of wrath. Have you been forgiven today? The Bible says in verse 4, But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love within he loved us. Rich in mercy, because all of us were born in sin. Rich in mercy. Because all of us need to be saved. Rich in mercy. Because all of us need to be forgiven. He has enough mercy to cover all of us. Your mercy, your grace can only go so far. You can only handle so much somebody doing you wrong. You can only handle so many times of being disappointed. You can only handle so many times of you giving your all and getting nothing in return. You're giving your finances, you're giving your clothes, you're giving your time, you're giving your mind, you're giving of yourself. You can only do so much and, and last for so long. And that's why we need the Holy Ghost to come in and strengthen us. And in verse 1 it says, and you have he quickened. Because when you run out of steam and you run out of energy and you run out of patience, we're in need of patience, the Bible says, and you run out of your own grace, you need the Spirit to come in and quicken you. When your answer is, no, I'm not going. No, I'm not giving. No, I'm not trying. No, I'm not answering the phone. No, they can't borrow it. No, they can't have it. The meal is mine. The food is mine. This is my house. They're not welcome. You need the Spirit to come in and quicken you. And say, yes, they can come in. Yes, they can have it. Yes, I'll send it. Yes, I'll respond to that message. I'll delete the whole paragraph and start all over and send one with grace. The Spirit can come in and quicken you because he'll remind you that you have been forgiven yourself. And what if God did you how you did the people? What if God turned me away like I turned people away? What if God sat on the throne and didn't have grace? The Bible says, that he waits to be gracious unto us. He's not just sitting around doing nothing. God is waiting to give you grace. He's waiting to give you mercy. He's waiting to save your soul. He's waiting to give you another chance. Verse 5 says, even when we were dead in sins, when we were not worthy of nothing, when we hadn't even repented, when we were walking around thinking everything was all right between us and God, it said we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, is by grace you're saved. We didn't earn it. Education can't get it. A financial miracle can't get it. Nothing you can do unto God can get you into heaven but grace. It says, and have raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We didn't raise ourselves up to heaven, but God is raising us up. Like you raise up a child, he is raising us up. How you pick somebody up off the floor, he's raising us up. Because we were dead, and when you're dead, you're not standing up. When you're dead, you're laying down. But he has raised us up and quickened us together. Gave us a running in our feet. Gave us a clapping in our hand. Gave us the mind to come to the house of God. The Bible says that in the ages to come, when is his time, when it's right on time, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. There's that grace again. Have you been forgiven? The exceeding riches of his grace. It exceeds seven times. It exceeds 30 times. It exceeds my time. It exceeds 
the yearly cycles that come through. Maybe you are only forgiving around Christmas. Maybe you only forgive when it's the birthday. Maybe you only forgive when it's time to have a baby shower. Maybe you only forgive when there's something in it for you. But the Bible says the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. God was kind knowing we were wrong. God was kind knowing we would leave him again. God was kind knowing we was lying. God was kind knowing we didn't mean our promises. God was kind knowing we, didn't, we were not worthy of nothing. The Bible tells us that we were without God. It's going to tell us in a couple of minutes, but he was still kind. The Bible says, for grace, for by grace are you saved, through faith. Got to believe this morning. The principal thing is wisdom. You have to believe that God can forgive you. You have to believe if he's forgiven you, you got to believe that he's forgiven you. And if he's forgiven you, that's for you to believe. I can't tell you he's forgiven you. But if you believe he has forgiven you, you got to walk in it. You got to walk in his grace. The Bible says it's not of ourselves, but it's God forgiving us. It is the gift of God. This forgiveness is the gift of God because he didn't have to forgive because he's right all by himself. I make no difference in if God is right or not. He's right with me. He's right without me. He's right before me. He's right after me. God has been right since the beginning. He's going to always be right. And so it's by grace, it is the gift of God. It says, not of works, nothing we have done. But he has to forgive us, lest any should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. When he forgives us, it's supposed to create good works in us. We're supposed to realize we've been forgiven. That man who was forgiven, we learned about Christian education, forgave of all his debt. He was going to be tossed in jail. The Lord said his wife was going to be tossed in jail. The Lord said the kids were going to be tossed in jail. The Lord said all the things he had was going to be taken away. Everything. Everything. But then he was forgiven. The Lord said, I forgive you because you asked me. The Bible says the man was moved to compassion. And what should have happened is when he left in freedom, when he left in liberty, have you ever left God in freedom and liberty? Came in the church bound, came in the church condemned, came in the church wrong, leave out the church right, leave out the church free, leave out the church renewed, leave out the church with joy because you know in your heart that God has forgiven you. The Bible told us this morning that the man should have had the same grace and compassion on his brethren. Have you been forgiven this morning? So when you leave this place and you leave this YouTube video, think about that God has forgiven you, that he has kept you when you should have died, healed you when you should not have lived, kept you and brought you out of darkness, turned things around when you couldn't turn it around yourself, didn't know how it was going to work out, thought you were going to lose the house, thought you were going to lose the kids, thought you were going to lose the job, thought you were going to lose your mind, but somehow the Holy Ghost worked it out for you. And now God has an expectation of all of us that we have to turn around and pay it back. That when it's your sister and your brother, and they're down on the last leg, and you say to yourself, but Satan says to you, but you remember when they did this, that, and the other? They deserve to be down on the last leg. If they wouldn't have been living like that, they wouldn't be in that situation. If they would come to church, they wouldn't be in that situation. But what about when I didn't come to church and I was in the situation, but somebody prayed for me, but somebody fasted for me, but somebody gave me the word, but somebody was long suffering, but somebody encouraged me in the word, but somebody told me how God was gracious and mercy and how he had mercy and how he would try me again. Somebody told me as long as I was alive, there was a chance. God is saying this morning, it is your time to go out and be gracious to somebody with the same grace he's given you, with the same forgiveness. Have you been forgiven? The Bible says, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Walk in the forgiveness this morning. Knowing that you can comfort somebody. With that same comfort that you received. Because I don't know about you, but when I was forgiven, it gave me comfort. Yes, I left the altar with peace. Yes, Tears in my eyes, but peace. 
Because I knew that God had forgiven me and he lifted the burden and he lifted the condemnation. And I knew that life could be better. And I knew that I could walk with the Lord. And I knew that it didn't matter what nobody said, what nobody did, and what Satan was saying, but I was all right with God. And as I close, the Bible says in verse 11, Wherefore, remember. Somebody say remember. Remember that ye being in times past unforgiven. Remember that in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcisions by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Remember when the people of God knew you wasn't saved. That at the time you were without Christ. It was me on the outside looking in. Unforgiven. Without Christ. It says aliens from the commonwealth of Israel had no part in this. One time the Bible says this one person was saying all this kind of stuff about God. They were trying to do a work and build a wall. And they had put their hands to the good work. It's like being in church. And we're here putting our hands to the plow. And we're just trying to do a good thing for the Lord because we've been forgiven and we remember. And it was some people on the outside. I think one of the names might have been Sandballot or something like that. And Tobias. And they was out there talking all this bad stuff about God, bad stuff about the work, bad stuff about the church. And the man of God looked at him and said, you ain't got no part in this. Basically, what you out there talking for, this don't even, this don't concern you. I want to let you know today, if heaven concerns you, you got a part in this. You got a part in forgiving somebody. You have a part now. The Bible says, remember when we didn't have a part, when it wasn't for us, when salvation wasn't for us, when the healing wasn't for us, when I was praying and my prayers were not being answered because I didn't belong to God. The Bible says, remember how that felt. But now we've been forgiven. It says we were strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope. Got to have grace on people for they have no hope. Got to forgive people. They are the way that they are because they have no hope. I was the way that I was because I didn't have any hope. Life was tough, didn't have any hope. People treated me wrong. The Bible says the same things are accomplished in our brethren. So you might have the Holy Ghost and God's on your side. They're still going to treat you wrong. So then you see somebody else that doesn't have God, as the Bible says, without God in the world. They have no hope. Treat it wrong just the same, but have no hope. That's why they turn around and treat you bad. That's why they turn around and, and are short with you. Because they don't have the spirit to tell them it's going to be all right. Because they don't have God in their life to let them know that they can be better than what's going on. They don't have greater that is in me than he that's in the world. But the Bible says that they were and we were without God in the world. Somebody say, but now. But now. In Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes... We're far off. But now, us in Christ Jesus, who are sometimes the unforgiven, we've been made nigh by the blood of Christ. We've been made close to God. We've been made a part of the family by the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus was for the remissions of sins, which is also called the forgiveness of sins. That whereas before God had the right to say, I'm not giving you nothing, you're not welcome. You don't have a seat at the table. I'm not healing you. I'm not blessing you. That's what it said in verse 12. He said we were without Christ, without God in the world. But now we have been made nigh by the blood of Jesus. I want to encourage you this morning. You can be made nigh unto God by the blood of Jesus. You can be forgiven. And if you have been forgiven, you have the responsibility to forgive somebody else. To draw them with the same cords of love that drew you. You have a responsibility. It says in verse 14, for he is our peace. We have a responsibility to bring peace. And who had made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Not between me and you. The wall that was between me and God. There used to be a wall that was unforgiveness. It's that same wall that we put up sometimes when we haven't forgiven somebody. And when that wall was in front of me, between me and God, I would pray and it would hit the wall and nothing would happen. And when you don't forgive somebody, you have a wall of partition between you and them and they'll ask and you won't do it. They'll seek and they won't find it with you. They'll knock and you won't open the door. 
But Jesus said, if we do that, God won't do it for us. We'll ask God, he won't answer. We'll seek him, he won't be found. We'll knock and the door won't open. But if we have received this by the Holy Ghost, Jesus has already abolished the wall. Don't put it back up. The wall has been taken down for you. Take it down for somebody else. Call your sister. Call your brother. Call your mother. Call that coworker. Whoever it is, be quick to forgive. I want to encourage you. He abolished this. In 15, having abolished in his flesh. Somebody say his flesh. The enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make himself or twain one new man, so make him peace. The Holy Ghost wants to make you a new man or a new woman this morning. He wants to take that stony heart and give you a soft heart of flesh. He wants to take out that old mind that says, as long as they do wrong to me, I ain't going to do right to them. The Spirit wants to give us a mind and say, but do all you do as unto the Lord. He wants to let us know this morning that it's God that judges. It's God that makes everything all right. And when you get to heaven, it is not going to be an acceptable answer I didn't do right because they did me wrong. He's going to say, but what did I tell you? So I want to encourage you this morning. 16 says, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you. And came and preached peace to you. And came and preach peace to you. Do you remember when somebody preached peace to you? When your mind was troubled? When you wasn't doing right? Didn't want to come to church? Wasn't dressing as they said you should dress? Maybe still had the worldly music blasting? Whatever it was. Or just the sin that you were born in. Somebody came and, pe and preached peace to you. The peace of God that passes all understanding. How you can't understand how you can go to church knowing all you did. How you can't understand how you can't be in church and travel knowing that there are people that did things with you. But the peace of God will come in, the forgiveness of God, because when you're forgiven, there's peace between you and God. Whereas you were not welcome, he says, come on in. When there was no mansion for you, he said, you know what, me and you, we all right. Let me give you a mansion in heaven. The peace of God will come in because he preached peace to you which were far off and to them which were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. And since the Holy Ghost gives us this access, that's why we need him. He gives us the access. He can take your prayers from as far as your ears can hear them all the way up to heaven. He's the access. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And all you're getting, get an understanding. You can have access to God by the Holy Ghost. That when you pray, he will help you. The disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. They were honest with Jesus. Jesus said, you got to forgive? They said, I don't know about that. I'm not there yet. Lord, increase my faith. Today, that might be you. I hear the pastor, I don't know about that. Pastor doesn't know what all they did to me. You can say, Lord, increase my faith. That's what I'm saying. Lord, increase my faith. Long-standing issues with people. Lord, increase my faith. Long-standing hurts and disappointments. Lord, increase my faith. And the Bible closes out here. It says, now therefore, after the Spirit gives us access, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. It does not matter what you have done. If you repent and ask God to forgive you and you find yourself forgiven, he'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you'll be no more stranger with God. That no matter what comes in your life, you'll have hope. No matter how bad it gets or how good it gets, you'll have strength. You have peace. You have everything that God needs. And it says, my last scripture here, verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself 
being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fit, fitly framed together, grow it unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Have you been forgiven? When you've been forgiven, God builds on you. When you have been forgiven, he will build you up. He will build your faith. He will build your ability to forgive. That's why you don't have to try so hard of your own accord. The Bible says it's by grace, not of works, lest we should boast. I'm not, my ability to forgive isn't because of me. It's because of God. And it's by his spirit. And that's why when you find yourself not able to forgive, you can ask God to increase your faith. And he will help you for, to forgive because it's not your ability in the first place. Since Pastor Harris said, we didn't alter grace. The grace of God is not my grace. It's his grace. The ability to forgive is his ability to forgive. Because we were born in sin. We needed to be forgiven. God doesn't need to be forgiven. We do. So he can give you the ability to forgive. And once you forgive, you can go free. And he whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. And when you are free indeed, everything is all right. When you are free indeed, life seems brighter. When you are free indeed, there's no situation too tough. Because you know that God is on your side as we stand today. Have you been forgiven? If you haven't been, you can be forgiven. If you've already been forgiven, God expects you to go out and forgive everyone else. Because in that great day, when Jesus comes back, we must know we are on our way to heaven. We must know that he's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I encourage you as you forgive, in your mind, imagine you when you forgive, hearing God saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Go through the people in your mind, even now as you stand, and forgive them if you have the ability to forgive. You know the people. You know their names. You can see their faces. You even remember what was done. Go through them in your mind. It's like going through your contact list in the phone. Start from letter A and go through Z. And each person that comes to your mind, try to forgive them now. And if you can't forgive them right now, that's the personal situation. you got to ask God, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, help me to forgive person letter T. Help me to forgive W. Help me to forgive. And you'll find yourself being able to forgive. And each time you forgive, you have to imagine God saying, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well done for letter T. Well done for Sister Q. Well done for Brother M. Well done for them and they. Well done for that part in your heart. And if you can begin to say within yourself, you're starting to hear well done more often than you used to, you're a step closer to hearing well done in that great day. Let's lift our hands unto the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, 